Dear friends, we are going to look at decorators in Python today. Now, when you read about decorators online, it sounds like a complex concept, but it's really not that complex. And the goal of this tutorial is to explain decorators in a very simple, easy way. Okay, so the way we are going to start this tutorial is first, let's discuss what problem decorators will try to solve, right? Like what is really the need of decorators? Here I have two functions, calculate square and calculate cube. And what these functions are doing is, for example, let's look at this function first. This function is taking an array of numbers as an input. It's just iterating through the array and calculating the square of that number and putting that into a result. Calculate cube does the same thing, but instead of square, it is calculating a cube. Okay, very, very easy functions. And here I'm calling those functions for a range of one to this number. Now, often you have a need of measuring the performance of a function. And by performance, I mean how much time does every function take to execute. And in order to measure the timing, you have to use the time module. I mean, this is one of the ways I usually like to do that where I will take the start time so what this will do is when function execution at, is at this point it will take the start time and once you are done you will take the end time and here you will say calculate square took how much did it take so it takes uh, n minus start into thousand so this will give you a result in seconds and I'm multiplying it by 1000 just to produce a result in millisecond. So this will say, okay, it took this many millisecond. All right. Uh, and we do the same thing for this function because we want to measure the performance of both of these functions. Okay. Okay. And I'm calling these functions here down below. Pretty straightforward. When I run the program, I see the performance that the first function took 14 milliseconds, the second one took 19. Now, the problem with this code is that, let's say you have a complex software project and you have written 200 functions. So in order to measure the performance of all those 200 functions, you have to write the start time end time the exactly same line of code in every function now this is not good you see like these lines are getting repeated start and both of these lines are getting repeated in every function that you want to measure the performance second problem is that there is a logic in this function now that logic is combined with the timing logic okay so the main logic of this function is to calculate square now you are cluttering that logic with the timing code and it makes code less readable there has to be a better way of doing this and that better way is basically decorator so decorator allows you to wrap your function in another function so let me show you how you do that. So first I'm going to remove this timing code. All right, so this is purely a timing code, which I'm removing now. And I want to have a function which has just the logic that that function is supposed to do. So this function looks now much clean. So in order to do a decorator, first you need to define the wrapper function. So I'm going to call my wrapper function time it. And that wrapper function will take function as an argument. Now, functions are first class objects in Python. What I mean by that is you can pass function as an argument to a function. You can return function as a return value from another function. You will understand this as we continue writing our code. So in this function, I'm going to define another function, okay, and call it a wrapper. So Notice that Python allows you to write nested functions. So you can have one function inside another function. And what this function is doing is it is taking the positional arguments, which is your star args and your keyword arguments. And then it will start the timer here. And then it will call the 
function that was passed as an argument so i'm going to call function here with argument and keyword argument and then i will measure the end time and in the end you will say function dot underscore underscore name so this underscore underscore name will return you the name of that function okay and this function took how much it took well and minus start so this piece of code is same as what we wrote before you want to measure the time of function in millisecond that's why you are doing this okay and of course you want to return the result all right this is my inner function okay and here my function ends and at this point i want to return this wrapper function here so again i'm returning a function from another function that's why this function is called a first class object you can treat it just like your normal variable you can return it you can pass it as a function argument and so on okay so let's let's first run the program and i will uh, give you more details on this time it function okay so let's run it okay so it looks like there is a problem oh yeah i forgot to decorate it so i created this timing function now what you need to do is decorate these other functions okay so the syntax is you have to say at so before this function line just say at and just say time it okay so let's run this program now cool so you can see that now it is saying calculate square took this many millisecond and calculate cube took this many millisecond so you see the beauty now that any function that you want to measure performance of now once you have defined this code you can just put this tag at the beginning and it's gonna measure the performance so this is really good it makes this code much more readable and then all your timing code is restricted into one function okay now i'm going to show you how all of this actually worked by debugging it i have put a breakpoint here in this function and in my py sham i will start my debugging session now in order to go inside i will press f11 so when you do this you notice that when it called calculate square function it didn't go to here at, at the first line of this function because it realized that this function is decorated it needs to call time it first because time it is a wrapper so it went here and from here uh, you can just do f10 to go to the next line now here this func is actually calculate square so when you go inside that you notice that now the flow is coming here okay so it will go here then eventually it will come to result okay you can see that it calculated the result it's here and then when you press next you, you see it came back here f10 f10 so again it is here and f10 okay so you now kind of get an idea on how it all worked cool so again just to recapture the main highlights decorator acts as a wrapper to your original function and you can do things like timing your function or even logging certain lines at the beginning and end of the function so these are like some of the common use cases of using decorators so i hope you guys had a fun time learning decorators and i hope that i have made it little simple if you have any question please don't hesitate to put it in the comments uh, box below thank you for watching